Hello and Assalamu alaikum. My name is Tanvir Bhatt. I am a specialty doctor in cardiothoracic transplant at Freeman Hospital in Newcastle upon Tyne. If you have to describe your job in one word, what word would you choose? Exciting. <laughs> Well, uh, my job entails basically the harvesting of the organs, uh, especially the cardiothoracic, that's heart and lungs, and also implanting uh, in the recipients. I'm also involved in the implantation of the left ventricular assist devices in the end-stage cardiac failure patients. So these were the commonest devices used all over the world. And uh, we have done about 30 to 35 devices every year for the last about more than 12 years. The device is basically support the heart in end-stage heart failure patients who are waiting for the transplant. So this device is basically used in the UK as a bridge to transplant because what it entails is that when we put the device uh, in the left ventricle, this device sucks the blood with a centrifugal force and then with the graft attached to it, it flows all the blood into the main ascending aorta, supplying blood to all over the body. So basically it's offload the heart, take over the function of the heart quite significantly, especially on the left side. And then people can have almost normal life uh, while they're waiting for the heart transplant due to the lack of the organs in the, in the UK. A lot of people, patients die while waiting for the suitable organs. We do about uh, 180 roughly in a year uh, heart transplants. So you can imagine the scale of the problem and the people who are with the end stage heart failure, they are waiting and that they are desperately waiting to have a suitable offer. So. Apart from surgery, we look after these patients in intensive care unit and we follow them up in outpatient clinic. Well, cardiac surgery, cardiothoracic surgery is a super specialty in a way that obviously it is not in every hospital. There are a few centers in the whole of the UK, so you can imagine uh, the competition will be extremely high because the number of jobs, they are limited. In uh, transplantation, suppose there are six centers in the UK, so you can imagine that a lot of people who would like to do cardiothoracic transplant, uh, they may not be very a lot of opportunities for them. They might have to be uh, in the waiting list or they might have to wait for the suitable time. So it is a hard work, it is quite challenging, and it's very, very competitive as well. Well, I think the surgeons and the physicians, they are different species. Physicians, they do a great job. I have a huge respect for them. But for a surgeon, you need to have a different personality. You should be very quick in decision making. And sometimes it is inbuilt in your personality that you want to sort out the things very quickly. And maybe you don't have that, that much patience as the physicians have. Physicians, they will do the job in a way of in a long term, but if the surgeons, that's in their inbuilt personality, they want to sort it out very quickly with the good results, basically. So I think they are different personalities. Both are doing a great job uh, for the healthcare system. The quality of good surgeon is not who can operate nicely. In my opinion, the quality of surgeon is the good, good surgeon is who knows when to put a knife on the skin and when not to put on the knife on the skin. That comes with experience. The first stage probably is that you should know how to operate. Second stage is when you know how not to operate and when not to operate. So that is very important decision making. If you just learn how to operate, that is in my opinion just like a technician. You can teach at every stage to anybody. But when not to operate, that is the most crucial thing that you, what you learn with experience. Every operation carries morbidity and mortality. And the surgery is offered only 
when you know the the benefits outweighs the risks. So it's it's not your ego. You're challenging. You feel challenging. Yes, if I say no, people will think I cannot operate. But but what you have to learn is that by operating on this person, am I going to give any benefit or not? So when that decision making come into your personality, that makes you a very good surgeon. Out of hours working, especially in cardiothoracic transplantation, six, eight hours, ten hours operation, um, unsociable hours. So those sort of things, you have to be prepared. You mentally and uh, a lot of role of your family supporting you uh, in that. Uh, if you don't have a good family support, it is very become very hard to continue. Uh, working in unsociable hours with the long hours. So, uh, in cardiothoracic transplantation, I think it's the, just the long, long hours operating and, un, and unsociable hours. So, it's not a planned surgery. Most of the time, it's, uh, obviously, it will be unsociable hours and also unpredictable. I've learned to switch off myself. So, even when I'm on call, uh, I just keep on carrying on my daily routine, not thinking too much. Uh, when, they, when, when I'm needed, they will call me. So that's how you continue your life. Otherwise, if you keep on thinking too much about the work. So I think there is a balance which you can keep by learning to switch off, even when you are on call, because you, you know that if they, if they need you, they will call you. And you need to maximize uh, the time to your family, to yourself, when you are not needed at work. So the best way is to learn how to switch off uh, even when you're on call. The biggest lesson I think I've learned is trying to keep a balance uh, for the work and for your family. And it was very hard. Some people lose that when they are very enthusiastic and very they want to achieve everything. But you have to prioritize what is the right balance according to your own personality. In my opinion, if you want to be at the very top of the pyramid, then you have to be a bit selfish. Not a bit selfish, maybe quite selfish, because you can just only think about yourself and you compromise a lot of your friends, your family, and your other part of your life. So my biggest lesson, which I was taught by my tutor, my mentor as well, how to keep a balance and realizing that what actually I want to achieve at the end of my career. So I thought I will learn how to keep a balance, having a good quality of life with my family as well, and, and, and reasonably achieving something in my career as well. I may not have been on the very top, but that's okay because that's how I wanted to keep myself because of my personality. Oh my God, that was a long time ago. And 1986, I graduated. And then I started general surgery and then cardiothoracic surgery. Till 1993, till I came here, I, I, I worked in Lahore, one of the biggest hospitals, May Hospital in Lahore. And the, things were very basic there. I mean, cardiac surgery was in a very, very initial era in Lahore at that time. And um, we had a very limited resources, no doubt about that. But we did a good job, and uh, because I think Professor Chima and Professor Jawad Sajid, uh, they were very dedicated people, uh, and they, with the limited resources, they tried to give the best results and putting a lot of efforts in that. Coming back here even, technology has changed a lot. Since I uh, started even the cardiothoracic and transplantation, different devices came. Unfortunately, the results in heart transplantation and the lung transplantation has not changed a lot. The mortality has remained the same for the last few decades even, because there are different reasons for that, in spite of the better care, better learning, and the good technology as well, because the profile of the patients has been changed. Suppose in transplantation, heart transplantation, we used to have not many donors, uh, above the age of 50. 
with time, the donor's age has gone up. So we have a different profile of the recipients as well. People are getting more older, they are getting more sick, they have more morbidities as well. And uh, yes, technology, different devices, different for the organ perfusion systems like organ care system, uh, by transmedics and the ex vivo uh, lung perfusion. They have a lot of rules in modifying and uh, reconditioning the organs, I would say. But because the profile of the recipient has been changed, they are more older recipients and they are more sicker and having more comorbidities, uh, the mortality and morbidity is still the same for the last few decades. But still, we are doing a lot of uh, good work. Still, heart transplantation gives you 55% five-year survival with about 10 to 15% mortality in first year. And the similarly, lung transplantation gives you about uh, 45, five-year survival. So, mind you, those patients, they would not have lived more than two years if they didn't have a transplantation. And it's very nice to know and nice to see when I do the outpatient clinic, seeing patient with a heart transplant, even after 20 years, having almost normal life. So the, the other things which have been changed since I joined cardiac surgery is that uh, in our training, it was long. It was, you have to do general surgery, then you have to do five, six years cardiothoracic surgery. But now, surgery is very focused. So if you want to do general surgery or you want to do any specialty of surgery, it's very focused. I think in our part of training, although it was long, but it gives you a lot of skills because uh, when you are ready to be consultant, you have done a lot of surgery. When we were trained, uh, we, as I said, in general surgery, we had three, four years general surgery, did almost everything, then cardiac surgery and thoracic. But nowadays, people will have a one or two years of F1, F2, and then they will go to specialty training and even cardiac and thoracic, they are getting separate as well. So that's another huge change, I think, as compared to when I started. And the second major change is that uh, we used to have more ownership of a patient. If I have operated on one patient next day, I was not even on call. But even then, I will follow that patient. And if any complications happen, I will have to come and, and, and sort it out. But nowadays it's a shift system, you know, which I personally don't like it because you don't feel the ownership. I, I don't think so that I can give much tips apart from that just to recognize yourself, whether you want to really do the surgery or not. You just need to assess your personality. Are you going to do specially cardiac surgery, giving you long hours to the hospital and uh, compromising your social life and your personal life as well? So you have to just judge yourself whether it is in your personality you want to be a surgeon. Because I think whatever you want to do in your life, you have to be dedicated. You have to be committed. And you can only commit it if you like it, you love it. If you don't love it, then there is no point. If you don't want to do these sort of things and you don't feel that it may not be exciting to you, then I would not suggest that. So there is no special tips to be a surgeon. I think it's your inner build. You, I give you my example that I, in Pakistan after graduating, I, I spent a few months in medical board. I loved it. I liked it. But as soon as second day of my general surgery rotation, I was uh, in the AD seeing a patient, young patient, female patients with uh, pain in right leg fossa, and uh, he had all vague signs of appendicitis. My reg senior registrar came. I was presenting a case to her, and she put her hand there, uh, and she oh, just prepare her for appendicectomy. And uh, I was surprised, you know, you didn't even hear a lot of history from me, from me, and then. Anyway, I assisted her and it was appendicectomy. Patient went home after three days. And so uh, immediately that was uh, uh, excitement for me and I, I felt good. 
that uh, we diagnose a patient, we treated her, and she went home. So I knew after a week of doing general surgery, yes, I want to do general surgery. I want to do surgery or some specialty uh, in surgery. So I think you you are aware once you are exposed to different specialty of medicine. If you are in middle surgeon, you will know. Um, some people and some friends I've seen, they push themselves to be surgeon. Yes, they can pass the exams, but they never become good surgeon. And some people with the very average uh, qualifications and academic records, they are very good surgeons because, that, in my opinion, that's is inbuilt. <laughs> Well, good luck. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Was it really good? Yeah, thank you very much. Very good. Well done. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good, so what, what are you going to do with this? I'm going to put it all over YouTube.